Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for holding for the TCS earnings conference call. We would like to provide you with a few instructions. To ask a question, you may enter star one on your phone. An operator will check your connection before announcing your turn. All participants are requested to use only handsets while asking a question. Please ensure that there is no background noise while addressing your questions to the management. You may be asked to return to the question queue if you do not have a clear connection. Thank you. The conference will begin shortly. Please continue to hold. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for holding for the TCS earnings conference call. We would like to provide you with a few instructions. To ask a question, you may enter star one on your phone. An operator will check your connection before announcing your turn. All participants are requested to use only handsets while asking a question. Please ensure that there is no background noise while addressing your questions to the management. You may be asked to return to the question queue if you do not have a clear connection. Thank you. The conference will begin shortly. Please continue to hold.
Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for holding for the TCS earnings conference call. We would like to provide you with a few instructions. To ask a question, you may enter star 1 on your phone. An operator will check your connection before announcing your turn. All participants are requested to use only handsets while asking a question. Please ensure that there is no background noise while addressing your questions to the management. You may be asked to return to the question queue if you do not have a clear question. Thank you. The conference will begin shortly. Please continue to hold. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for holding for the TCS earnings conference call. We would like to provide you with a few instructions. To ask a question, you may enter star 1 on your phone. An operator will check your connection before announcing your turn. All participants are requested to use only handsets while asking a question. Please ensure that there is no background noise while addressing your questions to the management. You may be asked to return to the question queue if you do not have a clear connection. Thank you. The conference will begin shortly. Please continue to hold.
Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the TCS Earnings Conference Call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Kedar Shirari, Global Head Investor Relations at TCS. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, operator. Good evening and welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us today to discuss TCS financial results for the first quarter of fiscal year 2024 that ended June 30th, 2023. This call is being webcast through our website and an archive including the transcript will be available on the site for the duration of this quarter. The financial statements, quarterly fact sheets, and press releases are also available on our website. Our leadership team is present on this call to discuss our results. We have with us today Mr. K. Krithivasan, Chief Executive Officer and Managing Director. Hey, good evening, good morning to everyone. Senji Subramanyam, Chief Operating Officer and Executive Director. Hello, everyone. Mr. Samir Sekhsariya, Chief Financial Officer. Hello, everyone. Mr. Milan Luckert, Chief HR Officer. <coughs> Hi, everyone. Our management team will give a brief overview of the company's performance, followed by a Q&A session. As you're aware, we don't provide specific revenue or earnings guidance, and anything said on this call which reflects our outlook for the future, or which could be construed as a forward-looking statement, must be reviewed in conjunction with the risks that the company faces. We have outlined these risks in the second slide of the quarterly fact sheet available on our website, and emailed out to those who have subscribed to our mailing list. With that, I'd like to turn the call over to Kriti. Thank you, Kedar. Once again, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you. I would just want to start by saying how happy I am to be interacting with all of you in my new role. And uh, I would like to, hoping to meet you all in person sometime in future. Uh, from a quarterly perspective, it is very satisfying to start the new year with a string of marquee deals and a good performance given the current circumstances. In Q1, our revenue grew 12.6% in repeat terms. 7% in constant currency terms and 6.6% in dollar terms. Our operating margin was at 23.2% and net margin was at 18.6%. I'll now invite Samir, Milan, and NGS to go over different aspects of our performance during the quarter. I'll step in later to provide more color on the demand trends we are seeing. Over to you, Samir. Thank you, Kriti. In the fourth quarter of 2024, our revenue was rupees. 59,381 crores, which is a YOI growth of 12.6%. In dollar term, revenue was $7.226 billion, by growth of 6.6%. In constant currency, our revenue grew uh, in Q1 uh, at uh, 7%. Let me now go over uh, the financial performance. As in prior years, we rolled out a salary increase across the entire workforce with effect from April 1st, resulting in a margin impact of two percentage points. By reducing our use of subcontractors and through other efficiencies, we were able to mitigate some of the uh, that impact and report an operating margin of 23.2%, a contraction of 1.3% sequentially, and an expansion of 10 basis points year on year. Net income margin in Q1 was 18.6%. Our EPS grew 16.8% year on year. Effective tax rates nudged up slightly to 25.8%. Our accounts receivable was at 65 DSO in dollar term, flat sequentially. Net cash from operations was rupees 113. stood at 2 billion rupees. The board has recommended an interim dividend of rupees 9 per share. Over to you, Milan. Thank you, Samir. <clears throat> Our workforce at the end of the first quarter was 15,318, a net addition of 523. While we are committed to honoring all the job offers we have made, our focus currently is on leveraging the capacity we had built earlier. 
Our workforce continues to be very diverse, with 154 nationalities represented and with women making 35.8% of the base. We remain focused on developing, retaining, and rewarding the best talents in the industry and enhancing their effectiveness by bringing them back to office to foster our culture. Our return to office initiative is picking pace, and 55% of our workforce are running office thrice a week. <coughs> Towards driving a more performance focused work culture, we rolled out salary increases of 8 to 10% for high performance and 12 to 15% for, for exceptional performance following our annual competition review. Our investments in organic talent development continues to deliver exceptional outcomes. Year to date, TCS has logged 12.7 million hours and acquiring 1.3 million competencies, including 180,000 high demand competencies. Uh, <clears throat> LTM attrition in IT services was at 17.8%, down 2.3% sequentially. Based on the current trend, we expect that in the second half of the year, our LTM attrition will be back in our normal longer term range which has historically been an industry benchmark for talent retention. Over to you, NGS, for some color on our segments and production. Thank you, Milan. Uh, let me go through some of the segmental performance details of this quarter. Um, I would like to also note that all growth numbers are on a year-on-year -year constant currency basis. Last quarter, we had called out the growing caution among the clients resulting in deferment in processing discretionary projects, particularly in uh, North America and Europe. And that has continued in this quarter. Growth among industry verticals was led by life sciences and healthcare, which grew 10.1%, and manufacturing grew by 9.4%. Other verticals <coughs> showed some softness. BFSI grew 3%, retail and CPG grew 5.3%, Tech and services grew 4.4%, and communications and media grew by 50 basis points. In terms of geographies, we see maximum uh, caution in North America and continental Europe, which grew 4.6% and 3.4% respectively. We continue to have good momentum in the United Kingdom, where we grew by 16.1%. Among emerging markets, India grew by 14%, Asia Pacific grew by 4.7%, Latin America grew by 13.5%, and Middle East Africa by 15.2%. Our industry leading portfolio of products and platforms had a very strong quarter. Igneo, our cognitive automation software suite, saw 37 new deal wins. There are about 26 go lives in the future. We continue to strengthen our cloud ops offering by expanding coverage across all three major hyperscalers. Launched a FinOps module to help customers analyze and optimize their cloud spend. Digitate scientists are collaborating with TCS research and innovation to leverage large language models to further enhance Igneo's predictive automation capabilities. TCS banks, our flagship product suite for the financial services, had seven new wins and eight go lives during the quarter. The deal wins were well distributed across developed and emerging markets um, and in banking, capital markets, and insurance. Among the go lives, a high profile one was the trading platform that went live successfully for trading, clearing, and settlement at NSE International Financial Services Center. The SGX Connect at the International Financial Services Center in the Gift City <coughs> went live during this quarter, by which um, the Singaporean and Indian capital markets can work seamlessly um, uh, on um, uh, dollar-denominated Nifty derivative contracts. TCS Bank's insurance platform also saw excellent traction in Q1, with three new wins and four go lives during the quarter. We already published in details of the deals with uh, NEST, Teachers Pension Fund, and Standard Life International, so I won't repeat them here. However, it is worth highlighting that the Standard Life International deal marks our entry into continental Europe, extending our platform and services footprint to meet the needs of the German and Austrian markets to begin with, and thereafter to other markets in Europe. Quartz blockchain platform had one go live this quarter. In life sciences, TCS had our advanced drug development platform had two go lives this quarter. 
<coughs> CCS ad safety went live at top 10 UK based pharmaceutical company to read and process adverse event cases. With this, CCS ad has successfully automated over 70,000 adverse event cases, including clinical trials as well as post marketing cases. TCS Omnistore, or AI-powered universal commerce suite, had one new win and one go live during the quarter. TCS Hobbs, our suite of products for communication service providers, had one new win and one go live during the quarter. TCS Twinx, our digital twin solution, had four wins and one go live. TCS Ion had 25 new wins and 23 go lives. In Q1, our platform administered assessments for 18.2 million candidates. 72% higher year on year. Over 2,400 corporates now leverage TCS National Qualifier Test for their entry level recruitment. Mastercraft and Jail won 30 new clients in Q1. Let me now go over client metrics. The steady increase in the number of clients in every revenue bucket is the ultimate validation of the customer centric strategy. The superior outcomes that we deliver results in a steady stream of repeat business and invitations from clients to transform newer parts of their business. This is the secret of the long and enduring customer relationships that we have been able to build. In Q1, we added one more client year on year in the $100 million band, bringing the total to 60. 13 more clients in the $15, $50 million band bringing the total to 137, 24 more clients in the $20 million plus band, bringing the total to 296, 22 more clients in the $10 million band, bringing the total to 468, 27, million, 27 more clients in the $5 million plus band, bringing the total to 677, and 72 more clients in the $1 million plus band, bringing the total to 1,258. I will now request Kriti to speak on the demand drivers during the quarter. Thank you, NGS. As NGS called out in his commentary, macroeconomic uncertainties have resulted in greater caution among clients. Clients are taking a month-on-month -month approach, resulting in very limited visibility on their future spending, even within their own organizations. On the discretionary side, while larger transformation programs like cloud migration are continuing apace, some of the smaller programs or sub-programs are coming under scrutiny. We continue to see reprioritization of projects in favor of those which are considered business critical and where ROI realization is likely faster. This is disrupting the normal flow of work in the form of an uninterrupted series of related projects executed one after the other. Long-running discretionary projects, typically CTB in nature, planned and scheduled some quarters ago under different circumstances are now coming in with reduced scope or reduced space. This is what is resulting in some revenue softness across most of our industry verticals, even though our order book has been very strong in the last couple of quarters, and there has been no problem in their conversion to revenue. At an overall level, given the uncertain macroeconomic outlook, we see strong client interest in cost optimization, vendor consolidation, and integrated operations. That said, the flavor of the quarter was generative AI. In every conversation I have had with the clients over the last three months, this has unfailingly come up. Gen AI promises to transform most knowledge work by assisting and augmenting people and improving their productivity. Over the last two quarters, we have engaged with multiple customers using our co-innovation framework in exploring use cases for generative AI across productivity improvement, content creation, and enhancing customer interactions. We are currently working on over 50 proof of concepts and pilots, and have more than 100 opportunities in the pipeline. Let me give you three examples. We are working with a leading European shipping and logistics company to automate their contract administration using generative AI, significantly improving productivity and enhancing business outcomes. For an energy utility on the West Coast, TCS is engaged in transforming their service desk operations using generative AI to enhance self-service, improve the quality of service, and drive customer satisfaction. This is being enabled via conversational service desk chatbots augmented with generative AI capabilities to provide precise, contextual, and personalized responses to user queries and issues based on knowledge articles. 
Generative AI is also being used to automate the call quality, audit functions for assessing and evaluating against interactions with the customers, and providing recommendations for improvement. For a global provider of travel insurance and assistance, TCS is engaged in a pilot project to transform customer service leveraging generative AI. This will enable the customers to get highly contextualized and precise responses to any queries that they may have on travel insurance policies, especially about the terms and conditions. The solution would manifest as a self-service multilingual chatbot to which users can pose questions about a travel policy in a natural conversational style. Unlike traditional chatbots, the Gen AI bot can understand nuances in the question and respond with specificity and personalized to user context. Generative AI will be used to also respond to queries busy door email. This is expected to result in reduced agent handling time, substantial productivity gains, and improved quality and consistency of responses. The excitement around the new technology apart, our point of view is that the full potential of generative AI is best realized through a holistic enterprise-wide initiative encompassing business, legal, risk and compliance, research and innovation, rather than through multiple point solutions. We have launched an advisory offering to help customers in creating a holistic vision, strategy, and plan for enterprise-wide adoption of generative AI. Additionally, we have started talent development at scale across multiple Gen AI solution suites in partnership with the hyperscalers. We plan to create a talent pool of over 100,000 Gen AI trained associates. On AI ML, this will build on the tremendous depth we have, predict we have in the predictive AI predictive AI, machine learning, and advanced analytics, which we have been using in the last few years to build transformational solutions that can recognize patterns across large data sets, make recommendations, and personalize customer experience. Today, we have over 50,000 TCSs trained in AIML solution building skills, with over 9,000 9, with top external certifications. We have market-leading products like Igneo, Optimera, ADD, and TwinX, which use AI, ML, AI and ML to transform their respective domains. We have filed over 710 patents for AI inventions in the past five, just past five years. 282 of them have already been granted. Two examples of recent engagements will give you a flavor of the business impact that AI-powered solutions can have. A Belgian provider of connectivity and digital services leveraged TCS consulting and advisory capability to shift from cost plus pricing to intelligent pricing within its ICT business. TCS delivered a differentiated approach, integrating data from multiple sources to extract meaningful insights from historical data, and an AI-driven dynamic pricing mechanism on an opportunity-by-opportunity -opportunity basis that also incorporated anomaly detection. The solution has already uncovered significant money left on the table that runs into multi-million dollars enabling revenue growth and profitability. For Cummins Incorporated in North America, TCS successfully delivered a strategic engagement to identify and reduce global warranty non-compliance. Leveraging contextual knowledge, in-depth understanding of the warranty function, and working closely with the business teams, TCS built a solution that uses pattern detection and automation through advanced analytics, advanced analytics and AIML to shift the detection mechanism early in the process. This initiative will potentially save millions of dollars per year for comments. A well-governed and robust data foundation is a prerequisite for enterprise adoption of AI. Consequently, as part of the Horizon One cloud transformation, many clients are also modernizing their data estates. We have, we have ex extensive experience in this area and a strong portfolio of intellectual property that has helped, helped us to gain share in this opportunity. TCS Data is an advisory framework to help clients assess their data maturity and define a holistic data, data analytics and AI strategy aligned to their business goals. We also have TCS Desmo that helps clients speed up data modernization initiatives with a host of accelerators and methodologies to improve project outcomes. And then we have Dexam or data exchange and marketplace solution platform to help clients democratize, monetize, and commercialize cross-functional enterprise data through 
private or internal data marketplaces. Let me share a few examples of recent data modernization engagements. A global leader in water hygiene, energy technologies and services partnered with TCS to modernize and migrate its master data landscape to the cloud. TCS uses domain and technical expertise to deliver a modern SaaS, AI, ML, and cloud native solution that enables near real-time integration with its core ERP systems to improve performance, usability, and scalability while reducing cost of ownership and technical debt. The solution enables seamless integration, interoperability across various business systems, empowering teams to make data-driven decisions and provide a strong foundation for future AI-based solutions. A US-based provider of connected vehicle services chose TCS as its strategic partner to enable its data monetization strategy to drive growth. TCS leveraged its proprietary data framework to build a data platform on a public cloud, which served as a single source of truth for data on, subs data on subscribers, vehicles, and other vehicle telematics. With real-time data ingestion and advanced analytical capabilities, the client now has a centralized repository of a very large data set that can be monetized through AML. The UI-based market infrastructure institution engaged TCS to build a centralized data warehouse to house all the data generated by the cybersecurity software and appliances in the enterprise, where they can be effectively monitored, assessed, reported, and acted upon to reduce security threats and vulnerabilities. The TCS solution stitches together technologies of multiple providers to provide on-demand scalability and traceability through a centralized framework. This has resulted in reduction of security vulnerabilities by 5 to 10 percent and enabled two times faster onboarding of newer sources. Most importantly, with all the cybersecurity data hosted centrally, it is now possible for the client to use AIML to sift through those vast amounts of data to help analysts prioritize the threats. On, moving on to cybersecurity, as we have pointed out in prior yearning calls, this has been an area of fast growth for us. Let me share a few success stories in this area. Ben Nor, a Norwegian state-owned company responsible for owning, maintaining, operating, and developing the nation's railway network, selected TCS to help move to a newer and more advanced identity and access management solution. TCS facilitated an organization wide assessment of the IAM state and leverage its domain and technology expertise to craft a new a unique solution that will help Bayna secure its complex and critical IAM and reduce risk. A leading supplier of rail-based transportation services engaged TCS to improve the security posture and reduce cyber risk. The TCS solution stitched together firewalls, proxy services, endpoint protection, SOC and vulnerability management to help the client achieve high cyber security standards. In addition, TCS is running the cyber security operation for the client and a managed services model. The European technology leader in electrification and automation engaged TCS for transforming the privileged access management to protect their large server estate across hybrid cloud as part of the stringent SOC compliance mandate. TCS managed and successfully delivered the PAM transformation, helping the client clear rigorous SOX audit control checks from third-party auditors with a no significant deficiency for the first time in three years. This established a robust foundation of PAM and gave the client sufficient confidence to expand it to other critical infrastructure and applications. Moving on to growth and transformation, we continue to see clients invest in business critical transformational programs that will drive growth. The leading UK based global beverage company partnered with TCS to accelerate growth with a B2B digital commerce platform. TCS helped design and deploy a bespoke solution that strengthens customer relationship across every touch point and provides world class digital experiences for customer engagement. The new system also improves commercial execution with 360-degree views of customers and insights on customer behavior, enabling tailored content and communication for targeted customers. Its 24 by 7 sales service has reduced dependency on the sales rep, increased net sales value, and significantly reduced the cost to sell. 
a us based industrial equipment rental company engaged tcs as its strategic partner to enable new services and revenue stream through equipment servitization tcs leverage is bringing life to things uh, iot transformation framework to build a hybrid cloud based iot platform as a digital spine of the company's remote operation center the platform collects field usage data coordinates maintenance and tracks availability of the assets that are rented out this data is used to provide real time asset performance insights that can help end customers avoid work stoppage reduce maintenance costs and improve asset utilization our client not only gains incremental revenue for these value added services but also a competitive edge in the market lastly we continue to see strong traction in marketing model transformation we have described in prior calls how these transformation entail redesign of all the processes embedding next generation technologies like machine vision ai and machine learning to boost velocity improve operational resilience and drive efficiency another aspect of these transformations that business leaders like very much is the tcs integrated operations model with ai powered business command center which provides them with end to end visibility and holistic control across back end middle layer and front end operations along with the underlying applications and data estate and the it infrastructure layer this enables better alignment with, with business kpis enables faster resolution of issues and greater resilience in operations faced with multiple challenges in the supply chain and it landscape the us based healthcare distributor engaged tcs as a strategic partner to transform their operating model their it tool systems and processes were fragmented and they had multiple service providers supporting their it infrastructure and business applications this fragmentation resulted in lack of traceability whenever there was any system failure any issue potentially meant some truck somewhere in the supply chain got delayed by 4 to 4 to 5 hours impacting the delivery of drugs a significant portion of the ticket resolution time was spent in just identifying the stakeholder responsible for the issue we integrated their different it service management tools into one modern platform consolidated their service just into one integrated team supporting all the business applications and the supporting infrastructure and implemented persona based solutions for better user experience we deployed our machine first delivery model leveraging multiple aml based value builders from the tcs cognic suite of solutions to transform the process all these have helped reduce supply chain disruptions improve the drug delivery fulfillment and enhance the supply chain effectiveness a large us based information management company partnered with tcs to digitally transform their cfo operation here too we deployed a new operating model that integrated the business processes and it support operations using tcs cognix and process mining to redesign the processes by integrating the support teams and monitoring performance holistically spanning businesses or spanning business operations it applications and infrastructure support we have helped the client enhance operational resilience and velocity helping improve free cash flow and working capital moving on to order book we had a strong order book in q1 with a tcv of 10.2 billion dollars the book to bill ratio of 1.4 in in rapid succession we won two deals in the uk public sector from teachers pension fund and nest and one from standard life bac reinforcing our leadership in the uk life and pensions market while the details of the nest win are already in the public domain including in our press release i thought it is worth sharing an interesting detail mentioned in their tender document available in public domain the court nest commission the broad market assessment from price waterhouse coopers to understand whether there is com- competition in the market capable of meeting nest requirement for technical experience pwc's expert conclusion was that apart from tcs there was no single supplier or consortium in the market now or the sh- the short term assess over the next 12 months who could meet nest requirements coming back to our q1 order book bfsi tc was at 3 billion while the retail order book was at 1.2 billion the tcv of deal signed in north america stood at 5.2 billion with that we can open the lines for questions 
Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Participants who wish to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone phone. If you are using a speakerphone, please pick up your handset while asking a question. This is required to ensure optimum audio quality on the call. Should your line have any disturbance, you may be asked to return to the question queue if you do not have a clear connection. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We have our first question from the line of Sudhir Guntupal <coughs> from Kotak Mahindra. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, uh, hi, Kriti. Uh, congrats and uh, all the best once again, sir, on your new innings. Uh, just a couple of questions. Uh, last time when we announced our results, uh, uh, the banking crisis in America and Europe was uh, uh, just cooking. Uh, now, is this issue still being referenced to by clients as a concern, or is this subject largely behind uh, uh, based on your client conversations? So, uh, the, so on, the, we don't hear about this topic much. I would say that that's largely behind us. In fact, uh, the large banks who are our primary customers, who are net beneficiaries, we don't uh, hear this as a concern anymore. Sure, sir. Uh, and and uh, we understand that uh, predicting macro six, nine months down the line may be tricky at this point. Uh, but given that uh, uh, this was a major panic or stress factor in the last quarter, is it fair to assume that uh, September quarter will see a decent growth unlike June, uh, which remains flattish despite the seasonal strength? Uh, I know you don't give quarterly guidance, but directionally, is that a fair assumption? You said we don't give quarterly guidance. I don't want to say anything on Q2 today. Uh, sure, sir. Uh, just one last question. Two consecutive quarters of uh, a strong deal booking, and despite the weak market, uh, not even including the BSNL deal, uh, and and uh, this quarter execution also largely played out in line with your expectations. And we are seeing market situation improved a bit, especially uh, uh, regarding this one panic factor. And you're saying pipeline is strong. So how do we reconcile it with your tone in general on the demand situation? Uh, is there a bit of conservatism you're baking in in your tone uh, to provide a buffer for any unexpected shock, uh, especially since you have just taken charge? No, no. Like we are not uh, being conservative or optimistic here. We are telling what we are seeing in the market, and uh, as we explained earlier also, the in the in the call itself, uh, while the demand is uh, still good, we are winning new deals. But uh, clients are reviewing the the projects underway, and wherever there is a ROI is not uh, very strong, uh, the next phase of the project is getting paused. So that uh, it uh, that that is so that's the reason that where we find that uh, revenue is a dropage happens for revenue sir. Otherwise, we don't see a long term perspective. We don't see any issue with the demand for technology or investment on technology. Thank you, sir. That's it from my side. All the best. Thank you. <coughs> we have a next question from the line of Apurva Prasad from HDFC Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for taking my question, uh, uh, Kriti. So, uh, after two quarters of 10 billion plus TCV, uh, I just wanted some more understanding on your media comment earlier when you said long term is good, short term cannot call. Uh, so, is that based on more client specific factors or deals deferred earlier have seen more cancellations in the near term? Uh, so, essentially, what I'm asking is uh, uh, the softness of the project prioritization that you referred to, has that become more broad-based across clients or that has become more concentrated within the pocket? See, excepting one or two specific cases, I won't say this is uh, concentrated. It is probably we see this trend, like it could be varying from uh, one account to another in terms of how much of the impact is, but uh, the fact that there is a review and reassessment of the project. I would say that trend itself is broad based, but uh, it could be like the how much a uh, given client uh, pauses the project or delays it versus other could be different, could be, uh, depend on the individual situation also. Like I was telling in the uh, media interaction, 
for instance, if you look at the U.S. banking, like large U.S. banks are still doing good. We don't see a major problem there. So it, it, it to some extent depends on the industry also. So up as well. Okay. Uh, and uh, my other question uh, uh, for Sameer uh, on, on the operational front, uh, what are some of the near-term uh, levers that you have, especially when uh, operating leverage impact is lower due to software growth? Sure. Uh, actually, we'll continue to use uh, levers uh, like utilization. I have called out that utilization still has scope for uh, improvement, and it continues to have. Productivity and realization becomes the other levers. And some of our discretionary spend is now at a critical mass where we can start uh, uh, looking at optimizing them as well. So these would be the primary levers. Thank you. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Mukul Garg from Motila Loswal Financial Services. Please go ahead. Thank you. A um, couple of questions from my side. Uh, Kriti, first on um, the you know nature of pauses which uh, you guys have started seeing. Uh, what are you hearing from uh, you know your clients in terms of uh, you know are, what are the signs they are kind of looking uh, for which can make them change their view uh, on these pauses or, you know, kind of push outs. Um, you know, is this something which people will still have patience for, you know, uh, some time before they start kind of pulling back up in terms of their tech spending? Or, uh, you know, do you think, uh, you know, the uncertainty being where there it is, if, you know, things don't worsen materially, uh, the demand can come back, uh, you know, on a shorter notice? So, uh, Mukul, like as you also mentioned, it is a uncertainty, near-term uncertainty, which is causing the uh, them to relook at the programs and uh, pause them wherever they think the ROI is not strong or is going to take longer time. And uh, once the uncertainty is uh, lifted, like they have clarity on a more long-term uh, outlook in terms of where there will be growth or what they should be doing, we would see a certain class of projects either uh, cost and optimization or transformation projects, speaking of the momentum. But uh, I, obviously, we cannot say when the uncertainty will be cleared. So uh, I would believe that till the uncertainty exists, there would be a cautionary approach towards investments. Sure. And, uh, you know, Kriti, uh, one question on, on the Gen AI. Uh, you know, obviously, you guys spoke a lot about it, but how should we uh, realistically you know, expect to see the impact of all the work which you are doing uh, from a two to three year uh, you know, window? Uh, is this something which will help you accelerate your revenue growth or uh, should we see this more as a, a defensive move which will help you defend your revenues because you know, there's a bit of a deflationary nature to the, you know, the Gen AI deployment? Or uh, is this something which will play out more on the talent side uh, and structurally moderate the pace of employee addition. Uh, Mukul, there's NGF here. I think uh, uh, all of the things that you said will play out. I think you need to be uh, looking at all these dimensions. Right? But I think what is interesting for us is the fact that um, it can deliver things faster. And um, the whole time to market element could be completely redefined, right? Uh, newer benchmarks could emerge, right? In terms of predictability of the overall software, quality, processes, everything can improve, right? Um, will it uh, mean that, you know, we will need less people? It's something that we'll have to uh, evaluate. But in all the technology adoptions in the past that we have seen, it has only increase the volume of work and thereby you know actually you know we needed more expertise and more hands to do the heavy lifting that people really look for right so from that perspective it's a very very interesting technology and a lot of evaluations are going on at enterprise level and the other thing is that look the whole cost model of it you know how much is going to cost me to embrace generative ai right how people are going to price it, right? It's a very interesting proposition that everybody is looking at, you know? Currently, you know, every token is getting priced, right? So how much is it going to cost me to embrace generative AI in my 
uh, overarching things that I want to accomplish across technology and operations is also something that will be taken and played out. Right? So I see a lot of opportunities for us in structuring our own um, way of delivering, our own um, uh, you know improvement to uh, the value propositions that we can offer embedding generative AI. But overall, it's uh, going to be very interesting to, interesting to see how industries is going to embrace it and given their own experience on cloud and the angst around the, how the cloud cost itself uh, in terms of consumption cost is emerging. Sure. Uh, thanks a lot for taking the question and best of luck for the uh, remainder of the year. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Kumar Rakesh from BNP Paribas. Please go ahead. Hi. <clears throat> Hi. Good evening. Thank you for taking the question. Uh, just an extension of the generative AI discussion we were having just now. So while you definitely talked a lot about the demand opportunity for the customers, I understand you are also running multiple projects internally as well to assess AI augmented processes, how they are going to save prop cost or productivity for you. Can you share some of the details on that? And is that a possibility that our own productivity benefits within TCS could start growing much ahead of the revenue opportunity from generative AI comes through eventually? Um, Rakesh is NGS again, and um, it's um, difficult to call out some of this, but sufficient to say that there are multiple teams, almost every verticals that uh, we have. <laughs> they are uh, pilots, they are internal projects, and how do we craft the methodologies and toolkits to be meaningful to our clients in using this technology? All this is going on, and as we called out um, earlier, uh, there are at least about 50 projects that we are executing. Some are small, some are large. And uh, I think, you know, one of the nice things to see is that, look, if a particular organization um, has an ability to predict one or two parameters which will create a maximum business impact for them, if that can be focused upon using this technology, I think that will create maximum impact, you know. Um, I, I mentioned about, for example, if someone can predict, if the technology can predict, let's say, the container price three quarters down the line, then it could be a boon for the shipping industry. So it's a problem such as that, you know, and how do you improve or increase the yield per acre of agriculture commodities, right? Uh, some of these things, and specifically mashing with the climate technologies or climate parameters that one has, which will have their own predicting feature, features, will all contribute to interdisciplinary nature of the solutions that we need to deliver, right? So there are a lot of work going on in the industry and within the research and innovation team of TCS. I think a couple of quarters down the line, maybe we'll be able to give you more. Thanks a lot, NGS, for that. Definitely quite exciting use cases there. Uh, Samir, during media interaction, you talked about uh, clawing back some of the margin in the coming quarters. Um, so how do you see the trajectory of the clawback? Will it be similar to what we saw last year, or there are higher tailwinds or headwinds this year uh, as we move in the coming quarters? So this is typical of uh, how it happens uh, in the year, uh, in a typical year for us, because we take the biggest headwind, which is the uh, increment upfront. And what I called out is, we typically claw back uh, uh, overall in uh, through the period. Uh, as you uh, you see the macro environment and the uncertainties around it, that is where it would be difficult in terms of uh, 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 to put across how exactly it will play out. Uh, but our our focus would be to incrementally uh, get closer to the aspirational band which we have. And improve through the quarter, uh, through the quarters, and through uh, exit at the higher rate through the year. Got it. Thank you, Samir. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Gaurav Rateria from Morgan Stanley. Please go ahead. Hi. Thank you for taking my question. I have a few. Uh, firstly. Uh, uh, let us know if the understanding is correct. You entered uh, last, like one queue with softness owing to events that played out in the month of March, yeah, especially in the US on banking side. Uh, 
and then you built momentum through the quarter to deliver what you delivered. Is it fair to say that you are entering now this quarter 2Q with slightly better momentum and better visibility than you did in the last quarter? Correct. that's very difficult to say. I don't want to venture into saying something like we have better visibility, better momentum at this time. I would say it's been very similar to what we saw in uh, March. Okay. Uh, I wish I can say that we are in a much better place, but uh, I don't want to give that uh, optimism at this time now. Got it. Second question around two very strong quarters of TCV. Now, based on the deal ramp schedule, does this provide you a greater visibility of second half versus first half? No. Uh, I said like uh, our second half would depend on what happens in uh, Q2 and how the momentum uh, further builds over that. So uh, I don't know. I would. I don't believe that uh, we are ready to call that uh, second half is going to be better than first half. It's too early at this time. Got it. Last question. Any particular investments on the consulting side to leverage the demand that you kind of seeing from? Generative AI projects, as you talked about, that a lot of organizations want to go, like you know, to the consulting mode and not look at necessarily on a silo basis, and also investments on the delivery side, uh, which could kind of uh, uh, help you to you know benefit from these technology. Thank you. Though of us, we mentioned, we are approaching it from multiple angles. We are building our in-house capability. Uh, we have our R&D team that's uh, working on developing patents and. Uh, very unique capabilities. We are leveraging our contextual masters because we want to marry the technology capability with the domain capability to deliver services. We are striking partnerships with all the hyperscalers and then we are training, we are committed to train 100,000 of our associates to be capable of leveraging this technology. So all these are investment in terms of any other investment, we also constantly look for new partnership and other kind of investment constantly. As something comes up, we'll definitely go forward and uh, make that, make those investments. But at this time, our investments more in terms of ensuring our associates and our uh, contextual masters and domain experts work together to think of the right use cases and overall enterprise-wide solutions for our customers. Thank you. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Ravi Menon from Macquarie. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you. Uh, so, the last quarter, you spoke about an increase in on site costs, and you know, normally that refers to uh, some uh, new project starts. Uh, for the current quarter's revenue performance, is that there's not been much traction with new projects. Uh, so, how should we think about the uh, puts and takes in terms of new contract starts and pressure on existing business over this quarter? The current quarter. Can you repeat the question, Ravi? Oh, yeah, I mean, how is, uh, you know, should we think about uh, the puts and take between new project starts and pressure on existing business over this quarter? No, we still didn't get it. Maybe we'll take it offline. Can you, just, can you move to your next question? Uh, sure. Uh, the next one is on fresher hiring. You know, it's like, uh, so was there any fresher hiring this quarter or was the recruitment uh, mostly lateral to backfill that region? No, no, we continue to hire freshers uh, uh, and we'll hire this quarter as well. Uh, and uh, that, will continue. that will continue. Right. Uh, and, you know, let me try one more time about the first question. So, you know, I was asking about, uh, you know, last quarter's increase in on site costs and whether that was due to new project starts. And have we continued to see new project starts over this quarter or, you know, and that kind of got offset by some pressure on the book of existing business? Uh, or, you know, we didn't really see any new project starts and, you know, that's why we kind of flat quarter on quarter in CC terms. So, uh, we call uh, the new project starts uh, with the deal wins uh, do continue to uh, ramp up. Uh, we also had uh, on-site movements happening incrementally in this quarter as well. And uh, uh, the, the net impact which we see on revenue is on the uncertainty on the exi exi existing uh, projects or customers uh, uh, with the pauses happening. Uh, let me ask uh, you know one more follow-up from me on this. Uh, you know this defers. 
uh, deferral of contracts. Is this due to this whole change in model to agile versus waterfall? You know, is that causing people to be able to take this pause and then, uh, you know, uh, versus say earlier you would really have a, a, you know, for any deliverable there would be months probably still to go, so you couldn't really uh, halt anything uh, mid-flight, and now it makes it a lot easier to put these pauses. Not necessarily. Uh... I like it's, I don't think I won't answer, attach it to from a methodology. It is more the business uh, outlook, like where when they see that the one thing you can say is because in agile methodology we are doing smaller chunks of work at a time. Okay, to that extent you can say that what we have delivered, that next phase of uh, phase of work, you can defer. Maybe to that extent you can say, but I don't think otherwise it has got much to do with uh, uh, the project delivery methodology. Really. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Thanks and best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Rahul Jain from Dollar Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, firstly, uh, on the regional market side, we have seen that, uh, that one third of the contribution uh, on a DTM basis has come from this uh, segment where the profitability is lower by 400 bips. Uh, versus company average, and some of the large deal uh, in India market that we know, like BSNL, GM, uh, probably may not have a higher margin. So, you think this segment growth, uh, faster growth, would put uh, further pressure on profitability in coming period? Um, it, it's um, uh, something that you know we like to work on but i think you know uh, there are fundamentally large programs large uh, system integration opportunities and um, if you really look at the overall deals uh, that we have signed uh, one is that the 10.2 billion does not include the bsnld number one number two is that the platform deals it has uh, uh, the potential see as long as we execute it well and uh, we deliver it on time and stick to the model in which we want to uh, continue to charge the customer um, on a fast basis. I think the opportunity is uh, there to to grow well. And it's also based on certain things like it's priced uh, based on per policy or per uh, claim that we settled and so on and so on. So it has the potential to create a really a structure which will uh, increase our margins as opposed to only diluting of a margin in some of these cases. Right? But traditionally, if you take a lot of system integration projects where we end up delivering some amount of hardware, yes, there it could be margin, uh, maybe less than the company average margin. But overall, you have to see there are large opportunities, long-term um, value creation is there with those customers. So it's a combination that we'll have to look for. But net, on a net-net basis, our uh, approach is take some of these projects, execute it well, and see that it adds to the overall capability creation and value creation, which is consistent with our philosophy. Just one more uh, thing to add, Rahul. We don't publish regional market uh, profitability separately. I think when you are looking at segmental results, they are based on industry verticals. Just a clarification. But what NGS said uh, still uh, remains on the regional market color. Uh, right, right. And uh, uh, M&A, if you uh, look at this one strategy that we have not leveraged much historically, do you see now is a good time to, uh, you know, use uh, either to build capability, let's say around Gen AI, or maybe scale up opportunities from captive transaction as many corporations are looking for resource optimizations? Well, our approach doesn't change, right? Like always you looked at M&A, if we have to augment some capability, we didn't have. And if we thought that by acquiring a company, we'll be able to uh, further expand our services to larger set of our customers. So we keep looking at it like whenever we find there's a good opportunity, big or small, uh, we would have, uh, go for it. But uh, our overall strategy doesn't change, whether it's Gen A or the whole gold cloud. Whenever there is an opportunity, we go for it. It has to meet our our, our criteria and the threshold. Right. Appreciated the color. Thank you. Thank you. 
We have a next question from the line of Vibor Singhal from Nuwama Equities. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for taking my question. Uh, just one question from my side uh, on the uh, uh, on the on the two segments that we have seen quite contrasting performance in the past few quarters. So manufacturing has held up quite well for us, and not just for us. I think for all the companies across the industry, uh, it's been quite stable in terms of growth. In, even in this quarter, we almost touched double-digit growth uh, on a by on by basis. So what is keeping this uh, spend up in the manufacturing segment, and are we not facing the kind of delays that we are facing in, let's say, BFS or other verticals in the manufacturing segment? And do you think that uh, manufacturing might continue to remain uh, stable in the coming quarters as well? And a similar kind of opinion about retail. So in retail, we had seen a lot of weakness in the past couple of quarters, and again, not just for us, for the entire industry. Are there any signs of that segment bottoming out? If not today, maybe in a, uh, maybe in a couple of quarters' time. Uh, just a color, a bit, a bit of color on both those, both, both these two verticals. I'd say, see, manufacturing is doing well because of the low base and the delayed, uh, delayed pickup in demand and growth compared to other industries. And as a supply chain situation also is a slowly, uh, the, they are able to also see the growth and sales. We, you, today you see the demand is still high for many of the automakers. I think that's probably driving it. And uh, again, I won't be able to say how long this would last because it will eventually be a function of the overall economy. Uh, on retail, uh, our view is, uh, or what we see, the essential retail is uh, doing well. But uh, if it is uh, luxury or fashion or other specialty retail, we find that the, there is a softness in demand in such kind of uh, such in a sub sub segment of the industry. So that's a broad color we can provide you on this. Got it. And on the manufacturing part, just a uh, follow up: uh, uh, is the only auto part of the manufacturing segment uh, uh, appearing stable at this point of time and looking to continue to spend, uh, or are the other sub verticals in manufacturing also? Kind of stable. No, like uh, I don't. We don't provide for, for detailed colors. I think or others, excepting one, uh, quite a few of the sub verticals are doing well. Okay, and but it may not also be uh, we work uh, overall industry. Like we do also have significant market share gain uh, in this segment, which is also driving our growth. Got it. Got it. Great. Uh, thanks a lot for taking my questions, and wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Ankur Rudra from JP Morgan. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you for taking my questions. Uh, just the first uh, question, a bit on the demand, maybe one more time. Uh, quickly, of course, you've seen over your you know long time at TCS several demand cycles over the last 30 plus years. Uh, is it possible to compare the current client behavior to any of the prior periods, such as perhaps post.com or GFC or taper tantrum or anything, or is it completely normal? Um, that's that's question number one. Yeah, uh, I don't know whether I can compare with every cycle has its own nuances. Okay. Uh, I would say today uh, the the way to look at one there is an uncertainty because of which they are reviewing or assessing the ongoing programs. At the same time, there is so much they realize that they have to do because there is so much of technology debt with each one of those industries. And uh, unless they carry out those transformative programs, they'll have a competitive disadvantage. So these two things are at play. So that's the reason, like we keep saying, that while the TCV is uh, high, we do softness, see softness in the short-term revenue. Uh, I don't know whether we can compare, or again, I'm not sure what is the value you get in comparing also, Ankur. Like uh, today, the reality is uh, long-term, Techno uh, this technology spend has to happen. Short term, they are navigating the uncertainty they have. Okay, now we were just looking, I was looking for if there's any uh, you know, historical path we can compare this to, but, but fair enough. Thank you for the comment. Uh, maybe you know, uh, maybe uh, moving to the generative AI side of the discussion, thank you for all the color today. Um, I'm just curious if you think um, Gen AI would be a needle mover on revenues either for this year or the next. And if it is showing up in contract discussions at all, maybe as a source of price aggression and cost takeout deals? Uh, no, it is not uh, showing that much uh, as being a differentiated uh, feature in our contract discussions. But, you know, everybody is curious about uh, its value. And um, 
really look at you know the investments that large enterprises are, are making uh, as they uh, move to a cloud native architecture uh, willingly there is a uh, intelligence layer in the overall architecture given the power of uh, uh, generative ai or its potential um, there have been efforts from everybody um, to see whether the architecture that has been put in place is consistent with the capabilities or potential uh, offered by generative ai whether such architectures need to be tweaked right so that kind of discussions is what we are having um there is always a uh, a question around uh, to explain you know how much of this generative ai capability needs to be uh, developed at enterprise level in house and keep the knowledge and uh, the learnings in house and how much of it can go outside uh, for its larger public cost um is a debate and that uh, consistent with the debate that people used to have earlier in terms of private cloud versus public cloud so all these discussions i think you know uh, will will happen for the next at least a few quarters and then there will be a, a, a let's say a meaningful conditional unconditional model that will get emerged and that will get um, embraced by the larger enterprises is what i i see uh, you see it is evolving it's purely my personal view on it i appreciate that but last question on uh, contract profitability um, uh, you know how is that progressing i realize that you know gross margins have you know continue to take a hit probably due to you know wage hikes this time uh, but if you look at the full year in f24 i know you expect margins to be clawed back but do you think there's any chance that margins on a full year basis might actually not expand in f24 or might even decline despite the supply easing up ankur are are all our efforts collectively will be towards improving margins but right now given the current macro it's difficult to give a color in terms of how it would end up exactly uh, but with all uh, uh, efforts going towards improvising on the margins appreciate it thank you and best of luck thank you thank you Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question for today. I now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Thank you, operator. We have started the fiscal year with a string of marquee wins, a robust order book, and revenue growth of 12.6% in rupee terms and 7% in constant currency terms. We see strong interest in generative AI among clients. While we are helping them explore use cases with proof of concepts and pilots. We have also launched an advisory offering to help clients create a holistic vision, strategy, and plan for enterprise-wide adoption of generative AI. We are also upskilling our employees at scale. We plan to create a talent pool of over 100,000 generative AI trained associates. Our operating margin in Q1 was at 23.2 percent, following our annual salary increases. Our net margin was at 18.6 percent. On the people front. We will be honoring all the job offers you have made, but remain focused on utilizing the capacity we have already built up. Our LTM attrition in IT services fell further to 17.8 percent, and we should be back in our normal industry-leading range in the second half of this year. With that, we wrap up our call today. Thank you for all. Thank you all for joining us. Enjoy the rest of your evening or day and stay safe. Thank you, members of the management. On behalf of TCS that concludes this conference call thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines